Welcome to tonight, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So, it is good to see everybody here. I'm excited to see what God's going to do tonight. I believe that God has a word for us, and hopefully you can leave here saying, I see it. I see it. And uh, the purpose of the word of God is to change us. The purpose of the word of God is to guide us and to shape us into being followers Disciples of Jesus. That's what we want to be. So we're going to start this out at night. Uh, the title today is Conformed or Transformed. Conformed or Transformed. So we're going to begin this with prayer. So if you would stand with me. And we're going to read the Bible just a moment. So I honor the word of God and also in prayer. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would anoint us and help us, my God. I'm praying that the anointing of the Holy Ghost would flow to Jesus. Mighty God, I pray that Jesus said every single enemy of God that would try to steal the word of God tonight would be defeated. Mighty God, every hindering spirit, every hindering cause would be defeated in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would help us to hear, to receive. Mighty God, I pray that the word of God would encourage us, my God, inspire us to be better, inspire us to be who you've called us to be, that we would give you everything, give you all of our heart. Let anointing flow in the house to Jesus. Let the Spirit of God bear witness to the Word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you stand for just a moment longer, we're going to read a scripture. Romans 12 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verse number 2. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there. If not, I'll read it in just a moment. Romans chapter 12, verse number 2. And this is what it says. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You may be seated. All right, so beginning this off, give me just a second to grab something here. All right. So the Bible says that we are not supposed to be conformed to the world, but we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. The transformation happens by God. And so we're going to talk about what conforming and transforming is. Because unless you know what that means, that verse really has no purpose for you. Unless you know what conforming and transforming is. And the fact is they are different. Both are change, but they're different kinds of change. So we're going to be talking about that. And hopefully this will make sense to you. So in the world we live in today, there's a lot of pressure for people to conform to what mainstream world says is acceptable, what isn't acceptable. Everybody has a point of view. Everybody has a worldview. Everybody has a perspective that they see the world through. It's, the, it's your paradigm of life. It's the way you see things. And so depending on where you get your worldview, you're going to see the world differently. We live in a world today that if you are um, against the mainstream of what people think, then you are an enemy. You are someone that is considered a, a hate monger. You're one that's considered hate speech or whatever the case may be. If you hold a different standard than what the world holds, if you hold different um, morals than what the, the mainstream does, moralistic tyranny, if you've heard that term before, is something that's thrown at a lot of people because they push that you need to do what is right. You need to do what is good. Honesty is important. You don't just live any way that you feel that there is a code. There is a, uh, there's a code of law, so on and so forth, that we are to live by. And so with all that said, I'm pretty sure most of you have an idea of what Plato is. And if you don't, you're about to get an education. <laughs> so Plato is much like clay, okay? It's malleable, meaning that it's, it's uh, formable. It's easy to shape. So what this is, is to conform. Anybody know what this is? What is it? A cup. It is a cup. That's right. It's a cup. So this cup has a function. We know what that, that function is. If you're thirsty, you pour the liquid into this or dispense the liquid into this or however you do it at your house. And then you drink it. So this is meant to contain liquid. What it means to conform is it means to take the shape of. 
So the idea is that this is what the world says that you should look like, be like, act like. This is, this is the cookie cutter image of what the world says you are supposed to be. To conform means to take and to begin to push around this cup here. And I don't have enough Play-Doh to do this completely. But you're taking on the shape of. For all intents and purposes, though, this Play-Doh right here is conforming to the shape of this cup. And when I had it, it was just a ball. It was just uh, a lump. But as I began to do this, as I began to wrap it around and spread it out, and if you give me enough time, I could probably do the entire thing. It would be a very thin layer of Play-Doh, but I could have it all the way around the cup. And to all intents and purposes, it would be the shape of a cup, but it would not be a cup, and it would not fulfill the same purpose as a cup. But the truth of the matter is, is that what you are supposed to be Versus what the world is trying to get you to become. The world is trying to get you to say, oh, look, this is what you, this is what everybody should be. And everybody needs to conform to, to allow that this to shape them, allow this to mold them into the same image. And so here's the question. Okay, here's the question for you. If the world is allowed to tell us and to form the way that we are supposed to think, then... What happens is, is that we are taking on the mentality, we are taking on the world view, we're taking on the, the thought pattern of the world. And if we're going to be Christians, then we cannot allow the world to dictate how we live, how we act, how we think, how we dress. Because if we do, all we're doing is we are conforming to the world. But the Bible says we're not supposed to be conformed, but we're supposed to be transformed. What transform means is that you go to you go from one thing to another thing. It's right. not that you're it's not that you're just shapeable. It's not that you could just they can just put you here and any old shape will do. I could I could conform to this cup. I could conform to my bottle. I could conform to my iPad. It's 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 flimsy. It's something that you can just shape anything. That's conforming. And so I'll, I'll prove it to you. Okay. Our world has a lot of stock and trends. If you don't believe that conforming is a thing, what about the fidget spinner? Mm -hmm. What about um, the Tide Pod challenge? Mm -hmm. What about planking? Mm -hmm. And I could go on. Why would you do that? Why would somebody want to stick a Tide Pod in their mouth? Well, come on. Because it was something that was pushed. It was something that was considered cool it was something that that and and because there is such a push in our world to conform to be like everybody else to say i'm a part of that group i'm a part of these people i had to be accepted to be somebody that is considered uh interesting and important everybody has a desire to feel important and so there's this push to conform so the problem is is that if we as the people of god if we are still malleable if we are still conformable then that means that when we're in church we look like the church whatever that whatever that shape may be but when we're out in the world we look like the world this is the kind of person that that and people talk about hypocrites in the church that's because it's the mentality they're a church person when they're in church but when they're out when they're outside that all of a sudden they're now an outside person that is conforming. That is, that is whatever shape of the environment you're in. That's what you become. But the Bible says that we're supposed to be transformed. So this piece of paper, okay? This piece of paper, we know what this is. The truth of the, thing, the, truth of the matter is, is that this is not a cup. But if, 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 if this was going to become a cup, it requires transformation. It has to be transformed. It's not something that is just conformed to the cup. If I put this around the cup, it is not a cup. It will not hold liquid. It will not do the purpose of a cup. This piece of paper has to be transformed. So what I'll do is I'll take this piece of paper and I'll go like this. And I'll go like this.
Now the piece of paper is no longer just a piece of paper. This piece of paper has become a cup. It's transformed. And this piece of paper will hold water. Now, if it's a coated piece of paper, that's why I asked earlier, because I asked for one. If it was a coated piece of paper, it will hold water for long. But this one eventually will soak through and begin to drip. But this piece of paper has now been transformed into a cup. It's not conformed to a cup. It's been transformed to something. It has been changed. It has been completely changed. So here's, in the world we live today, people all over the world, there's, there's push that you can't, you can't disagree with them. You can't disagree that if you were made a boy, you were created to be a boy. Were you born a boy? That's the way you were created. You can't disagree with that. If you do, you are considered a hate monger. You're considered somebody that is, that is uh, speaking hate against that person's preference of who they want to be. But from my worldview, I love that person. And if they try to be anything other than what God created, then they're hurting themselves. And so I am not conforming to the world. I've been transformed. My mind has been renewed. My mind has been changed. And I don't see things the way they see. And so the way I think, the way I dress, the way I am, people begin, everybody has a standard. If you go to a ball team, they tell you what to wear when you get on the field. The world today, they, they, there, there is a haircut that came out during 2020. It's called the wolf haircut. There was a huge push, especially in Canada, for everybody to get this wolf haircut. It was supposed to be a gender neutral haircut. It was a push. They were telling people to get this haircut. If we, as the church, tell somebody the way we prefer them to dress, or the way we prefer we would prefer them to behave themselves, or the way we would prefer, prefer them to wear their hair, so, so on and so forth, then all of a sudden it's all about controlling. We are, we are trying to control people. We are trying to get people to do what we, we're just using our position to control people. But if they do it, it's in the name of good. It's in the name of the people. And it's, it's different. There, there, it's, it's the idea of there is a push to conform. But we are pushed to be transformed. That's good. Right. That's good. We are called to not, to not be wishy-washy. That if the world comes out with some new fad, we're not changing. Right. Or if we're around a group of friends, we're not changing. Yeah. Or if, if somebody begins to try to get us to do something, we're not going to do it. We have been transformed. And we don't just conform to whatever wind of doctrine or whatever thought or whatever push is in our world today. So that is the basics. Here is where it gets a little real, and I'm trying to hurry. This is where it gets real. Because you can really tell the difference, and we can talk about it not being conformed to the world. But guess what? If you are a person that is easily conformed, you can conform to the church. You can come into the church, and you can lift your hands and praise and worship God, and you can pray. And people will come into the church and they will see that there's a way of behaving and there's a way of acting and there's a way of dressing and, and people want to be accepted. And so they can conform to that. And you can come in and, and, and you can see that person and, and for all intents and purposes, that person looks like the church. They look like somebody you would consider to be a church person, right? right. This is where it gets real though. Because during 2020, there was a, a, a moment when God turned the lights on. Because people were no longer able to go to church. And because they were not in that environment, and whatever the environment tells them to do or to be, that's what they became. So as long as they had a solid church environment, they conformed to that ideology. But when church was taken away from them, and they were now forced to live on their own beliefs, on the word of God, on whether and, and, the, and the test was, are you conforming, or have you been transformed by the word of God? And then you begin to see the difference between a person that was conforming to the church, or a person that had become the church, a person that was transformed. A person that, no matter what you put me through, devil, I'm standing on the word of God. I don't live the way I live because it's a preference. I live the way I live because I believe it. It's a conviction. It's who I am. I am not who I used to be. I am a child of God. And so, the Bible says that we are not to be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So here's a question I have for you before I move on. There are things that if you were with your pastor or if you in church, 
If there are things that you do, the way you live, maybe the way you dress, the way you think, all of this stuff goes into place. I'm not going into all the details of this, but if there are things that you do there, a way you live there, a way you talk there, but when you get around other people, the way you talk is different, the way you think is different, the way you act is different, the way you dress is different, all of these things begin to change. Then are you conforming to the church or have you been transformed into the church? Because it's real easy to do what everybody else does. Right. Right. Yeah. It's really easy to feel accepted. Guess what? Noah looks stupid building that ark. Yeah. Faith yeah. looks stupid until the rain starts to fall. Yeah. Yeah. So the truth of the matter is, is that this is the reason why God says it's so important for us to not just be a conformer, but to be transformed. We are different. We're no longer just a piece of paper that can just be wrapped around stuff. We have become something that will not change. This is who we are from now on. This is who I am. This is the way I live, and I'm not changing. Okay, so let's talk about a story real quick. If you don't know the story of Daniel, then we're going to talk about it real quickly. The story of Daniel. The Bible talks about with Daniel that... uh, the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, decided that he wanted the best of the children of Israel to serve him. So he was looking for um, the smart, the intelligent, the good looking, all of that stuff. He was looking for them. And so he told his servants, his soldiers to go out there. And they brought back um, of one particular house four young men, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And when he brought them back, he said, okay, now I want you to basically, I want you to bring them in to the Babylonian culture and so that they will become Babylonian young men and work for me in my palace. That's what he wanted them to do. So they bring them in and Ashpenaz was there and uh, he began to talk to him and says, okay, look, Daniel, your name is Daniel? Daniel? Your name is no longer Daniel. Name, your name is now Belshazzar. And so he goes on and, and Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said, your names are different. You know, why would they do that? Well, come on. Why would they change that? Because what the king told them to do, what the king was wanting them to do is that if these young men are going to serve me, then they need to become like me. They need to conform to my way of thinking. If they're going to serve my country, you've got to get their country out of them. If they're going to be a part of my faith and, and who I am, you've got to get what was in them out of them. So the first thing is their names, their names, each one of their names was a praise to God. I wish I had it before me. I, I didn't I, I didn't think I was going to use this. But each one of the names, Daniel, and Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, all of them were praising God. And each one of their Babylonian names was a name attributed to a false god. Baal Protects was one of them. Another one was uh, to the Babylonian moon god. All of their names, and so what they did is they changed the name to try to get them to conform to the culture. That's good. Joseph. They changed his name from Joseph to Zaphnath Paneah. Why? Because they were trying to get him to be accepted by that culture. And they were trying to get his culture out of him. We're talking about being conformed. And so after that, they, they, he said, set him before my table. We're talking about eating at the king's table. You think that going to Golden Corral is some good eating? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. <laughs> but have you ever sat at the president's table? Come on. He said, sit them at my table, feed them from the very food I eat myself. And by all of this abundance, all this good stuff, they will start living for it. They will start loving me because of the things I give them. They will become dependent upon me. And all of these things will desensitize them to whatever I say as being good. Because what I'm feeding them tastes good. good. But Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, out of all of the young men that were brought before them, these four told the eunuch that was given over them, they said, we will not defile ourselves with a portion of the king's meat. He said, what? Don't you understand that the king has told me that I must feed you this? If the king sees that you're not healthy, he'll kill me. And Daniel said, I propose a test. You feed them all the, all the king's meat and you feed me just water and vegetables. And at the end of 10 days, if we do not look as healthy, if not better, than they do, then you can do whatever you want to us. So he said, okay. 
After 10 days, he comes back. He says, Daniel, you look better and healthier than everybody that's eaten everything they wanted from the king's table. You continue doing what you want to do. So here's the thing. Why did he say that? There are two reasons. First of all, that they were according to God's law. They couldn't eat certain things. They couldn't eat pig. So that means they couldn't eat bacon. They couldn't eat catfish. I could go on and on about a couple of things, the, the different things they could not eat. And so all that stuff coming across the table was not, they, they could not touch it. They could not eat it. If they did, they would be defiling themselves. So here's the thing. All of the things that the enemy begins to push, social media, video games, TV, movies, all of these things are, what happens is, is that they will... They'll start with things that are innocent and slowly desensitize you. Slowly, so because it, 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 it's, and whenever that stuff comes across the table, oh, it, you pick and choose from that table what you can eat. Here comes the catfish. You can't have that. Pass it on down. Here's the bacon. I can't have that. Here comes down. Oh, here's some steak. I can have steak. I'm going to eat some steak. And here comes, and so on and so forth. But what happens when that steak is wrapped in bacon? I'll just take the bacon off. But when you begin to eat that steak wrapped in bacon, you begin to taste that salty flavor, and all of a sudden you have an appetite now for something you're not supposed to have. Oh, that's good. That's good. Desensitize. Right. You become desensitized to it. You become desensitized to all of this stuff. And so Daniel said, I'm not even going to go there. I refuse to eat at the king's table. This may not be popular, but I'm going somewhere. So social media, all of these things that are pushing it are meant to desensitize. And Daniel said, no, I'm not going to do it. And so after the time of period of, of them going through all this process to become loyal servants of the king, they are all brought before the king. Anybody want to guess who the king's favorite was? All right, come on. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah came before the king. And the Bible says that the king, let's, I'll, I'll read it to you because it's, he'll say it better than I can. And it says, Daniel chapter 1. Verse number 17, as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill, all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding and all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king has said unto them that they should be, uh, that he should bring them in, uh, the prince of the eunuchs brought them before Nebuchadnezzar, and the king communed with them, and among them all was none found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they stood before the king. And all the matters of wisdom and understanding, the king inquired of them, and he found them ten times better. We're not talking about he found them a little bit better than the other wise men. And we're not talking about just the other young men that were brought in. We're talking about all of his advisors. He found them ten times better than all of the magicians and astrologers that were in his realm. In the entire kingdom, yeah. there was nobody found like these four young teenage boys. And why do you think that was the case? Why do you think that happened? Because there were some young men that said, I will not be conformed because I have been transformed by the word of God. I know who I am. I'm standing on who I am. And when you are who God called you to be, when you've been transformed by the power of God, God empowers you to be who he's called you to be. So here's the thing. Okay. Conformed Christians have little power. Transformed Christians have all the power of the Holy Ghost on their side. Yes, amen. It makes all the difference. It does, amen. It makes all the difference. If you say God doesn't care, I want you to go back and I want you to read how God told them that they were supposed to prepare the tabernacle in the wilderness. All right. The Bible gave them strict instructions. He told them exactly how they were going to build it. It was it was detail. If you don't think God cares about cares about the details of your life, just read your Bible. You'll find that God cares very much about the details. Very much. I'm almost done. Second Corinthians chapter ten. I do have a skit, guys. It's just last. Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse number five. So we've been talking about not being conformed, but being transformed. The Bible says in Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse five. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth or makes itself bigger, if you will, exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. So casting down imaginations, the way we think, what we envision, what we fantasize about may not be a word that you're used to using, but the, the imaginations of our heart 
every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, against what God's truth is, that's telling us we don't conform. If the Bible says something, if the Bible says you were created in, our, in, in his image, male and female created he them, then we do not mess with that image. Because if you were created as a woman, you are depicting a part of the character of God, the, the image of God. If you were, if you were born as a man, you were, you were created that way to display the glory of God in only a way that you can. That's good. So. Everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. What this is telling us, bringing into captivity, meaning that we, we take it and we do not let it run away with us. This is telling us we're not conformed. Yes. That we do not conform. Once you've been transformed, there is still a pull on you. A pull on you to conform. To be like everybody else. Now, I realize that we have to go into places, we have to do other things, we have to be involved in, I think, some things that we have a choice in about, and we shouldn't go there, other things we do not have a choice about. But my question is, when you go to school, when you go over to the friend's house, when you do that, when you're on social media, when you're here, when you're there, right. mm -hmm. when there is pressure, are you conformed or are you transformed? Right. Do you just do what they want you to do? Do you follow the, do you follow the vibe? Do you, get into the, do you get into all of that? You know, there's a, a lot of people will tell you, and just take this for what it's worth, okay? A lot of people will tell you that, you know, when it comes to sports, I don't worship sports. Okay? You take, you take, take it for what it's worth. But the question I have for you is that when they're in that environment and everybody starts yelling and everybody starts screaming and everybody starts shouting and you find yourself leaving their horse, and when you go to church and people start worshiping right. and you get uncomfortable right. and you leave there with your voice, mm -hmm. right. tell me you're not conforming. Right. That's good. That's good. Tell me you're not conforming. Mm -hmm. Being transformed. Mm -hmm. I have a purpose and I'm going to fulfill that purpose. All right, give us just a second to do this again. Okay, let's see here. Okay, Tonto, ride upon the 18 wheeler. Okay, there we go. You don't ride very well, and the line in the middle. Junior? Yeah, hey, mommy. Um, take this. I'm gonna sit right here. Don't eat it until after dinner. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Just repeat what I just said. Do not eat it until after dinner. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Really? Okay, Tonto, time to stop. Okay, the lion will eat you. No, save him, police car. Save him, save him. Ah! Okay, that's fine. Tonto's been saved. Onto the truck. We must escape. We must escape. And they were saved. Everybody goes. <laughs> Everybody goes crazy. Tonto's been saved. Yes, the Blue Wonder has done it again. Da da da. I gotta go to the store. Uh huh. So you behave. Okay, I'm just playing. Okay. Bye, mommy. Bye. Oh, mommy, can I have an energy drink? No. <laughs> don't you text me. Don't you text me. <laughs> the car is gone. <laughs> <laughs> No, I shouldn't do it. I shouldn't do it. I shouldn't. You know, but it tastes so good. Tastes so no, I shouldn't do it. Stop, stop. No, 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 no. 
stop, 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 stop. You, you can do it, you can do it. What am I talking about? I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> What if mommy comes home? Get it going. Ah, the cat. The cat ate it. It's fine. Oh, there's peanuts. Good thing I'm not allergic. I don't think. I need some milk to go with this. Sally. Hello. Wait, my post. Oh, guess what? I just got a text from Bobby, right? And so the entire youth group is going to see the new movie Blood Slasher 2.0. It is awesome. I mean, there's like, like, it's blood everywhere. It's like, <laughs> and the effects are awesome. There is explosions going off. And, and there's, yeah, you know, there's, there's a couple of things, but it's just a little, it's just a little bit. It's fine. It's fine. It's just a couple of bad things for a little bit. It's just a little bit. So it's be, it'll be fine. But anyways, it's awesome. The effects are awesome. In fact, that it's like new 3D features. Like when you're sitting there and the explosions happen, you like feel the heat on your face and smell smoke. It's awesome! I can't wait to see it! Okay, so we're going at like 3 o'clock. You should come. You, you really need to come with us because I'm telling you, you've never seen anything like this. And it's the newest thing coming out. I mean, it's got like this virtual reality aspect to it. Nothing else has ever had before. Um... <sighs> I don't think I'm gonna come because I don't feel right about Oh, okay. I'm actually going to go to the mall. To the mall? Yeah. If you change your mind, you can come. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go that way. Alright, so in the first skit, we have Junior, and one of the things about being conformed is. It's easy to be conformed when you have somebody keeping you accountable. It's easy to be conformed, it's easy to follow the rules, it's easy to, to do what's right when there's somebody watching you, when there's somebody there to help you, when there's somebody to keep you honest. It's real easy to do that. So when Junior was there and mom put the candy bar down and the temptation was there from the very beginning, but it was, it was pretty easy for Junior to say, you know what, I'm not going to eat that candy bar while Mama was there. Because if he knows, if Mama was to walk in, I'm getting a busted. I'm getting spiked. Or if he did it while Mama turned it back and she turned around and he happened to have candy bar in his mouth, he knew what was going to happen. And because there was an accountability there, because that he was in a position where that there was an incentive pushing him to do what is right. It was easy to conform to the rule. But when she was gone and she wasn't there and nobody was there to stop him, nobody was there to punish him, then when there was no more pressure to conform, you see whether or not it was in his heart to obey mom. You saw whether or not he had been transformed into an obedient young son. His heart had been changed that mama knows what's best. And if mama says no, then that's no. All right, come on. She cares about me. She has a reason. Yes. You can see the difference. But because he was just conforming to it while she was watching, and everybody knows kids. Yes. Kids are that way. Yeah. But as they grow up, you should see the change. As they become teenagers, by then they should have it down. And you don't have to tell them. When they are gone, don't do this, or I should say that, um, so on and so forth. They should have it in their heart by then to listen, mm -hmm. to obey, to know that the parents have what's best, the best interest at heart. They should have learned by past experience and understanding and teaching, so on and so forth. But the second example is the opposite side of the coin. We have a young man that comes and says, hey, we're going to go see something, go to see this movie, and it's the youth group. It's a group of kids that are supposed to be good. Right, come on. Supposed to be doing what is right. Amen. Come on, that's good. They're doing it. Mm -hmm. But we have a young lady that says, you know what? I don't feel right about it. That's good. 
Why would she say that? There's a huge pressure to conform. But what her friends are there, people she knows are there, people that she respects are there, people, and, and I'm, I'm getting very, very real in this moment. Because this is the kind of pressure that if you are going to be transformed, you will be under. Even from people that you respect, even because if it's conviction in your heart, that even people you respect will not be able to make you waver. Good. Everybody has moments of flesh. Everybody has moments in where they do things they shouldn't do. Even people that you respect. Because we're all human. We're all flawed. We will all fail. But if it's in your heart, it doesn't make a difference what they do. That's right. If the Bible says something, if the word of God says something, then I'm going to do it. I've been transformed by I'm loving Jesus and following him because it's in my heart. Right. And so the young lady says, no, I don't feel good about it. And what I love about transformed people is because we can talk about peer pressure. But we can talk about people that are transformed become very good at turning peer pressure around. They become very good at trying to get others to conform to what is right. And so by the time she got done, she said, you know what? I'm, here's an alternative. This, I'm going to the mall. How about you come with me? Come on, when that young man left, he was, his mindset, he was now struggling. You know what? If she s says something is wrong, it might be. And not, now he has an alternative of something else he can do. And enjoy. We're talking about the power of somebody that's transformed that will go against what everybody else is doing to conform. I am who I am, and you can come with me. You can begin to, and the thing about it is, is when they come around somebody that's transformed and they're a conformer, and they begin to see the strength in you, they begin to ask themselves questions how can you be strong? And then someone that's been transformed can teach a conformer what it means to be transformed. That may have gone over your head, but. Hopefully, in this lesson, I've got you to ask some questions about yourself, questions about what the world is trying to push, about things you look at, things you are involved in, environments that you're in, all of this, how it affects you. The Bible says evil communications or evil environments corrupt good manners or good morals. We should avoid when we can bad environments and influences because they will corrupt. Even someone that is transformed can find that if they spend too much time in bad influences, that their transformation will begin to have its issues. And their God-given shape, if you will, as the cup, will begin to morph. So you got to be careful. If you'll stand with me. So there's the question. Are you conformed or are you transformed? Do you go to church just to be there? Or is it a part of your life? It's a part of your heart. I want to be there every time the doors open. Why? Because my life has been changed. That is who I am. It's who I am. Every chance I get. You will pray with me, Lord Jesus. I pray to God that you would anoint us and touch us. I pray that the word of God would speak to our hearts and our souls, God. Mighty God, whenever we are convicted, that Jesus, mighty God, we can feel uncomfortable because that Jesus, light is shed in darkness. Things that have been in shadow, things that God that we've not thought about, things that we've not really realized before are coming to light, that Jesus. But you inspire us to change, dear God. You don't condemn us. You don't make us feel as though we can't change or though that we, that God, that there's so much against us, that Jesus, but your love inspires us. It shows us that there is a better way. It shows us that there is a way to draw closer, a way to be better, a way to have greater freedom and greater power and greater authority. To have, there is a way to become greater in the kingdom of God and that God will give us greater favor just like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, just like Joseph found favor in enemy territory, found favor in kingdoms that were not their own. The way that happened is because they had made up their mind that they were who God called them to be. I thank you so much to Jesus. I thank you for all of your power and your strength in helping us to change. You know, God, fighting against every lie that would hinder. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I appreciate you. So good to see each and every one of you. So good. Amen. You're welcome back anytime. We hope you will come back. God bless you in Jesus' name.